like uh, you have stopped your TV career and uh, was it better or was it more interesting for you to work for TV or, for, or as a coach? Well, obviously they're, they're different, yet by being able to do television, I can stay around NBA basketball. I love coaching, but the nature of the job is sometimes you do well, other times if it's not so well, they replace you. Uh, some coaches, when they get replaced, look around and try to figure out what should I do next. Uh, I've been fortunate that the television people have been very good to me and have allowed me to do the games on TV. So when I was the Atlanta coach for seven years and I finished the seven years, I went to NBC TV for three years. Then I went to Cleveland to coach for six years. When I was done in Cleveland, I went to TNT for five years. Then I went to Memphis to coach. Now I came back to TNT. This is four more years. So I've kind of gone back and forth between the coaching and the television. And the great thing about the TV is that it keeps me around the basketball, which is very important to me. So your name uh, sounds like an Italian name. It is. Yeah. Fratello means brother in Italian. And you have Italian uh, roots? Yeah. And my mom, uh, my relatives were all from Sicily. Uh, San Giuseppe Atto and Santa Croce were the two cities in the Palermo area, little small villages. And, uh, and that's my heritage. Uh, I've had an opportunity to go back to Italy a number of times. Uh, and it's great. It's a great country. They're great people. And, uh, this is a great honor for me to be here, though. Yeah, yeah. Uh, as you know, you've been uh, in the Soviet Union in the uh, 80s, yeah, with uh, your team Atlanta Hawks, yeah, and you traveled through Soviet Union, yeah. Well, can, but I actually you remember. I was situation? actually back here last year for. We did. Uh, they brought us in to do a clinic. It was like a sports day for 800 children, and they had the big festival and everything. We, we came in and spent two or three days. We did clinics, we did the coaches thing, and then and then we went right back out again. On the way back, we stopped in Moscow. We had dinner that night, and then we, you know, we flew back out after that. So it was about a three or four day stay. And uh, that, I remember somebody saying to me, you might be the first American that's ever been to this to this city that we were in. I, I, I can't remember the name of the city. Do you, do you remember where I was? They had built, they had built brand new um, swimming pool building, gymnasium building, and another all in this small little town that, that we went to. Uh, it's not far from Moscow. It, we had to fly. Uh, we had to take. We, not only do we fly into Moscow, we had to take the next plane to get to where we were going to. It was a very small town. They said every time I said to them, "We all, you know, don't worry about it." You know, it's like that. But it was, we stayed there for three days. It was a very, very small, very beautiful small city. Very clean. Everything, everything was painted new. It looked very nice. Almost looked like a Swiss, Swiss oh. village almost. The architecture of this little city. Mm. So. But, but uh, can you remember your first time in Soviet Union? What, what it means for American in the 80s to come <laughs> to uh, Soviet yes. Union? Yes. You've been impressed, I think. Well, I'll just tell you this. When we got on the bus to go to the first place that we were staying, cows walked across the street and they decided to stop. They wouldn't let us move. We just sat there until the cows decided to move. And it was, it was Suhumi, I think, it was our original stop. And uh, we just sat there until the cows were ready to move. And then when they decided to move on, <laughs> then we, the bus went to the next place we were going. And then... Uh, one of the first nights that we stayed in the facilities that they put us up in, um, lightning hit the building. We lost all of our, all of, we had no lights. So we were all in this building, like dormitories almost, with candles uh, for, for the night because we had no electricity for the night. So it wasn't the best start to everything. At this time when you have uh, been moving to Ukraine, what you expected to see? Uh, maybe uh, some, some picture like... In 80s, no, no, I, I had 
you know, a lot of people had told me uh, from the NBA who had been here, obviously Sasha told me and uh, uh, that things have changed. This is a city of four million people now. It's almost the size of Atlanta, a very similar size to Atlanta. And uh, I had heard that it's a very beautiful city. So I, I, I didn't know what to expect, but I knew that people had talked very, very well about it. Yeah, and uh, can you remember Sasha Volkov uh, when you started to work with him? Uh, how he was at uh, that time and uh, how he tried to, to be involved in American life, maybe? On... Well, uh, obviously we were impressed enough with him that we drafted him and signed him to a contract and he wound up playing for us in the NBA as one of the first players, you know, to come and play there. So uh, he was young, he was very anxious, very eager to learn. Uh, he had toughness about him. Um, I think since that time he's had a couple meals and he's not the same thin little player, okay? He's now a strong man, uh, but he was uh, a guy that, you know, I really loved because in practice every day he tried very hard. You know, we had pretty good players, Dominique Wilkins and Doc Rivers and that whole group, so he was playing with some very good players. Was it hard for him at uh, that time uh, to, to leave and to play in America? Well, I imagine that, you know, the challenge for him was great. But because he loves to play so much, I think also there, there probably was some frustration that he wasn't able to get more minutes because here he played and was used to playing so many minutes. There I had a Dominique Wilkins, you know, that Kevin Willis. I had people in front of him that he, he couldn't play the same number of minutes. So it made it hard, especially, but that's good. That's the kind of player you want. You want a player that wants to play. The bad players are the ones who don't care if they play. They don't try hard. They just take the check. And they, I, I want players that f feel bad that they're not playing because that means that they have a hunger to play the game. Yeah, and uh, maybe you, you are now in the same position like he. Uh, in the 80s in America, you came to Ukraine and it's something new for you, it's a uh, different country, yeah, different uh, psychology, uh, everything different, uh, maybe you feel something like Sasha in the 80s? Well, you know, you're a little bit apprehensive going in because, as you said, there, there's a lot that you don't know. Uh, but I think the point is I have to learn. Uh, I have to do my homework and do my research and, and watch and try to be smart and talk to people and hear what they say. And then, then go coach basketball because that's what I do. Uh, so you know we'll do the best that we can there to try and make the team a very solid team. Okay, thank you. Thank you. And good luck. Yeah. Thank you.